So y'all, my family and I, we went to go see the Bob Marley movie this past weekend, and it was an excellent movie. However, it brought up so many different emotions for us, and I thought it was just me, but when I looked over, my daughter was doing this. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Why are you? Bob Marley movie was sad. I'm never going to see it again. And we're definitely some Bob Marley fans, but the reason we were crying and so emotional is because we remember the true story of how he really actually died. And although it's alleged, and if you look it up, it's going to say they have fact checkers that checked it and debunked it. Anytime I see fact checkers, I already know what's up. Plus, I'm not going to give it away, but the movie pretty much threw little nuggets in there to let you know. What I'm thinking and what we about to hear is definitely true. There's a guy by the name of Bill Oaksley. He is a retired U.S. CIA officer who was admitted to the Mercy Hospital in Maine and told that he had two weeks to live. Upon hearing this news, he decided to confess to the murder of Bob Marley, reggae superstar, musical icon, Bob Marley. Uh, listen, I don't know if dude is telling the truth or not, but there are certainly a number of people who is interested in this information because there are people who actually went to their grave believing that America had a role in Bob Marley's death. Did. This guy claimed to have committed 17 assassinations for the U.S. government between 1974 and 1985. Oxley, who worked for the CIA for 29 years as an operative with top-level security clearances, claimed he was often used as a hitman for the organization to assassinate individuals who could represent a threat to the goals of the agency. Trained as a sniper and marksman, Oxley also has significant experience with more unconventional methods of inflicting harm upon others, like poisons, explosives, induced heart attacks, and cancer. The 79-year-old operative claims he committed the assassinations between March 1974 and August 1985 at a time when he says the CIA was a law unto itself. He says he was part of an operative cell of three members which carried out political assassinations across the country and occasionally in foreign countries. Most of their victims were political activists, journalists, and union leaders, but he also confesses to assassinating a few scientists, medical researchers, artists, and musicians whose ideas and influence represented a threat to the interest of the United States. He claims he had no problem with going through with the assassination of Bob Marley because... I was a patriot. I believed in the CIA, and I didn't question the motive of the agency. I've always understood that sometimes sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. Bob Marley in 1976 was a very serious threat to the global status quo and to the hidden power brokers implementing their plan for a new world order. As far as the agency was concerned, Bob Marley was too successful, too famous, too influential. A Jamaican roster man who started using his funds and fame to support causes around the world that were in direct conflict with the CIA. To be honest, he signed his own death warrant. It's not like we didn't warn him. We sent a few guys to shoot up his house in Kingston. He's referring to the shooting that took place at Bob Marley's house that left him injured in the chest and the arm. He said, we had a message for him. We impressed upon him the gravity of the situation he found himself in. He didn't listen. Two days later in the mountains, I stuck him with the pen. Then he goes on to explain how Bob actually assassinated, how it played out. Two days after Bob Marley was shot in the left arm by one of the three gunmen who ambushed the singer and some of his crew in his house in Kingston, and after a brief stint in the hospital, Bob Marley traveled to the protective hills of the Blue Mountains and spent time at the highest point in Jamaica, rehearsing for an upcoming concert. According to Oxley, he used press credentials to gain access to Bob Marley when he was on his Blue Mountain retreat. He introduced himself as a famous photographer for the New York Times. 
and he presented Bob Marley with a gift. I gave him a pair of Converse All-Stars, size 10. When he tried on the right shoe, he screamed out, ouch, that was it. His life was over right then and there. The nail in the shoe was tainted with cancer viruses and bacteria. If it pierced the skin, which it did, it was good night nurse. There had been a series of high-profile assassinations of counterculture figures in the United States in the late 60s, early 70s. By the time Bar Marley's time came around, we thought subtlety was the order of the day. No more bullets and splattered brains. Oxley claims that he kept in close contact with Bob Marley during the later years of his life, ensuring that the medical advice that he received from the doctors in Paris, London, and the United States would hasten his demise rather than cure him. He died from cancer in May 1981. He was just 36 years old. Do y'all hear this shit? Sacrifice had to be made for the greater good. The greater good of who? But this is where we live. This is the world that we live in. They'd rather get rid of people who are trying to spread unity and love than to get rid of the people who's been here keeping up the fucking agendas, the patriarchal agendas that's over. Let me be very clear. But yeah, this, this is what they do. This is who we have leading us. Are you serious? And they did this to this man, the man that thinks like this. Have you made a lot of money out of your music? Money. I mean, what is how much is how much is a lot of money to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Have Have you made, say, millions of dollars? No. Are you a rich man? When you mean rich, what do you mean? You have a lot of possessions, a lot of what? money in the bank. Possession make you rich? I know I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life. Forever. Energy never dies, y'all. So let's keep this legacy going. Let's keep his message alive. One love. One love. That's it. Because you see what we up against. Nothing but pure evil. Love, appreciation, and gratitude for watching.